Hello everybody, welcome to JC Let's Play. My name is Jonathan Cook, and this is episode 20 of Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. We're joined once again by Mia Aliapo. Hello, Mia, how are you today? And uh, when last we left off, we were here in Murabi Drydax. We had run around a bit and talked to some people, and didn't kill anything. So let's get back to the killing, shall we? Uh, I have three quests here, nailed it without a doubt, and constant carvings. Uh, two of which require me to kill things, one of which requires me to doubt people. So, that should be fun. We'll go out the doors here. Uh, the first thing we need to kill is lightning sprites, which I believe are part of our... Whoa. Okay. I believe are part of our uh, hunting log, possibly. So we'll see if we can double up on things there. And... Just keep moving. So we need to kill and obtain... Kill three lightning sprites, or slay, and uh, obtain three lightning cores. And indeed, we do get our hunting log experience from that as well. Oh, and I started off with the wrong spell. Of course I did. There we go. And of course, the benefit of, of uh, farming elemental sprites is I re received from lightning shards from not that kill, but the kill before. And I need one more. I'm curious if Tander might be on the same quest. I discover a new location. And here's the wild jackals we need as well. And a lightning sprite. This one level 12. Slightly higher than the ones we were running into below. I think. I wasn't paying much attention. But I believe they were like level 11. But this will be the last of these that we need. Ooh, and hit by lightning there at the last t shot. And... That completes that Arcanist hunting log. We need a couple wild jackals as well. Four, to be exact. Oh, and... I keep getting interrupted on my miasma. There we go. And we'll take out this wild jackal. And immediately move on to the next one. I think. There it goes. Carbuncle is taking his time with attacking. Oh, and now it's attacking me. I really don't want to get hit by that. <laughs> two down, two to go. As you can see, we have a couple down there. Oh, and I can. Let's see what happens if I cast at them from up here. I'm curious to see if they will follow the the route around, or if they'll just kind of jump up here. Uh, looks like they're going to follow it around. Ooh, except now I lost line of sight. <laughs> but it should be just about dead before it can attack me. And not a single scratch. Let's do that again, shall we? For our last wild jackal. And of course, Carbuncle chasing it down as well. And line of sight again. Ooh, I'm not quite as lucky with not getting hit that time, but... Better than could be expected. Now let's go and talk with some people. We have Ashen's Torch that we need to do something at, and we have Candlekeep Quay as well. We'll start there, casting our doubt on people. And we'll jump down from here, taking a little bit of fall damage, but luckily the crabs are non-aggressive creatures. And there is also a quest here waiting for us, but we need to talk to Haldbroda and cast our doubt on him. Hmm. 
Now he seems rather taken aback by that. Turtleback Island? He cannot do that. Can he? I swear on my poor, Nan poor Nana's grave. Navigator, rest her soul. I know ought not of this Fiddlesmid nor his precious supplies. Hells, we were here at the, Qu the Quay have had enough trouble these fa past few suns. What with the sinking of that Lemonson cargo ship off the Salt Strand? I haven't had the time to take a proper piss, let alone make note of every scrag that wanders in off the grip. Oh, well, he's casting the blame the other direction. Hald Broda has a suggestion for the kind adventurer who came bearing Foreman at Birm's message. Ooh, and we will get a new weapon from this. Now, the way I see it, if you have the time to be standing here questioning my character, then you most certainly have the time to get that arse of yours down to the Salt Strand and help us search for survivors of the wreck. Who knows? You may just run across this fear... fear smid? Fear smid? Everyone seems so eager to find. Here's to hoping the navigator hasn't found him first. And we'll get this quest from Azumin. Melvin's Gate Field Assessor, Azumin, is seeking help to exterminate an unknown pest. And you'll notice from this quest that we will have the option between a Bronze Salada for a Gladiator, Marauder, Paladin, or Warrior, a Hard Leather Eye Patch for a Disciple of War, or an Aether for us. And since I don't really use those, I'll probably take the Allegan Bronze Pieces, just for the added little gill that we can get from those. And uh, it, sh it should be nice. So, anyway... Let's talk with her. Excuse me, adventurer. Might I have a moment of your time? Allow me to introduce myself. I am Azuman, field assessor of from for Malvin's Gate. My work with the Custom House involves the investigation of claims made regarding the unful, un unlawful import of restricted items from foreign shores. Recently, there have been a number of petitions made by the residents of Candlekeep Quay concerning a species not native to Vilbrand. If this species is indeed alien to the island, it must be located and destroyed immediately, before is it, allow it is allowed to reproduce and possibly disturb the natural balance found here amongst the area's, area's fauna. I would ask that you take this lump of fetid dodo flesh and place it upon one of the mounds of soil thought to be the nest of this invasive species. The odor should draw forth whatever creatures lurk beneath, leaving them easy targets. So basically we have an invading creature that uh, would be bad. Ooh, and there's a fate that we could start, but we're not going to. So we're going to start by going down to Salt Strand and writing the shipwright. And I think we'll do this quest on our way up to Ashen's Torch, so... And we have mapped the realm of Lower Lanasia, and we have the Salt Strand, which is a crystalline structure, uh, just that was kind of created as part of the Calamity. Ooh, and there's Feral Smid. I am Feral Smid. You say the foreman's wondering on me whereabouts. I thought he might be, but you must know, I cannot show me face at the dry docks until I've righted the terrible wrong I've caused. Two nights past, I made the trips from the dry docks to Candlekeep Quay, just as the foreman asks. The seas went, were right rough, and the captain of the cargo ship was wary of bringing her too close to the cliffs. So I paid a few coins to a fisher to take me out to paid a few coins to a fisher to take me out to meet her. By the time I was halfway twixt shore and ship, the soils had risen to nigh on ten yalms, and twasn't long for the waves had hold of us. Try as we might to study the boat, the nature's, nature's grip was too tight, and we was flung headlong into the Leminson galley. When I awoke, both ships were gone, and the cargo I was to collect lay strewn across the salt strand. I has made every effort to salvage it, but the sands are crawling with Kakirin, and I ain't a, and I ain't a one with a sword. And now you see why it is I can't return to the dry docks. So, now I need to salvage the Victory's Helm Wheel, the Victory's Rigging, and the Victory's Sailcloth. All without dying. How very nice. So, we're going to have to make some strategic pulls here. Oh, and I did not mean to use Energy Drain there. That pulled a little bit more aggro than I was willing to use. But we'll use Aether Flow and get that back up there. Just so we do have it on hand, should we choose to use it again. And these Kakirin are a type of beast race that hasn't, as far as I know, doesn't have a primal that they worship. But I could be wrong. And we were discovered by a Kakirin. Was not quite expecting that. And I was outside that cone. I thought I was. There we go. That one down. 
Let's take a look around. There's the tangled rigging. We have someone fishing here. One of my favorite pastimes in the game, fishing. And of course we were discovered by another Kakirin. Kakirin. I don't know why I keep calling them Kakirin, as if there's another eye. <clears throat> Excuse me. And folded sailcloth being our last item, and no doubt our last Kikirn that we need to kill as it attacks us. three of those. Oh. I was not intending that. A wind-up Aldegote. I have yet to see that. In-game. And we'll talk to Feral Smid up here. Oh, we lost Carbuncle. Guess I'll have to re-summon him. That night I was tossed into the sea like some doll of rags, and it weren't long before the wind round me faded to black for the world round me faded to black as I slipped deeper into the abyss. But lo, the navigator wouldn't see me to the gates of the seven hells, and I'm, and I woke to find myself washed ashore. And here I've been ever since, waiting for what? It didn't. Waiting for what? Uh. That time I didn't even double click. It just kind of happened. The missing parts. I don't know how I can repay you. I'll deliver the supplies right away, but first I must stop by the quay so that I may pay my respects to the widow of that brave fisher who gave his life for a handful of coin. Could you tell Atbirn, Atbirn that I'll be at the, back at the docks by nightfall? It's already nightfall. Actually, it's almost daybreak. I will not... <laughs> thanks, adventure. Many thanks, adventure. I will not forget this kindness. I suppose if he has all day to do it, and he can do that. And we've joined a fate. Ooh, the Mandragora Prince. Ah, uh, why not? We'll take part in this. Let's summon Carbuncle first. This is a fate I have never done. And it looks like this might be a longer episode anyway, so... Ah, what do I care? It's a very large Mandragora. I'll use virus. Why not? Lower its strength and dexterity. Somebody's carbuncle launched that thing backwards. Looks to be coming like it might have come from uh, Yuzu Citrus. I don't think it was mine. If not, I might feel bad. And continuing to whittle away at this Mandragora Prince. those dots before I forget again. And that should about do it for him. And, wow, 3,000 experience. 26 gil, so not a ton of money, but a good amount of experience for that. So, let's go and do our Forbidden Island quest. 
Hopefully this episode will stay under 25 minutes. We have a few objectives yet to complete, but we will see. A suspicious hole. Let's see what this invasive creature is that we're having to deal with. Ah, mightlings. Yes, indeed. A level 10 mightling, so we should do relatively short work of this. And there's one down. Oh, they keep coming. <laughs> I wasn't quite expecting that. I was already moving for the next one. But... I'll tank this one, giving Carbuncle a bit of a respite. And then I'll heal us, back, or us both back up. Ooh, and there's the big one. And because I'm healing, I, of course, generate more enemy than Carbuncle. Might. He's a big one, isn't he? Ah, so we only had to do one of those. That's good. <laughs> So let's go up to the lighthouse. Check my map very quickly just to make sure to orient myself. There's Rostenze. It can keep, or it can get right lonesome up here, all alone, with naught but the wind's chill to keep a man company. Some days I carve jackal fangs to help clear me head of the voices. The voices calling me back to the great blue. What's this? Mimidoa sent ye, did he? Well, you tell that old man he needn't waste his last few sons in this realm worrying about poor old Rostin, say. I'll carry on as I always have, in the service of the sailors, alone till the day I die. Well, that's uplifting. Rosenze yearns to profess his love to a certain special someone and requires your help to do so. And you see, we'll get some new boots. Level 15 boots from a level 13 quest. I've still not understand that, just understood that logic. Whilst the carvings helped me clear, keep my head clear, a bit of company would ease the solitude. Truth is, with each turn of the sun, I creep ever closer to the brink of madness. All day and all night, I dream of someone who might rescue me from this poison. Prison. Someone broad and hale, with skin the color of the sea, and eyes will suck you in like a maelstrom. Someone like Grimtho Gimtho Gimthota. Get that name out yet. I've been enchanted by her sweet magic since I first saw her. A young lass from the Morobi Dry Docks, on patrol of the God's Grip. She smiled at me, but I was too at up inside by fear to meet her gaze. And now, since her promotion to head watch, she can't be bothered to make the climb. I would tell her how I it is I would tell her how it is I feel, but me duty to the sailors. Wait, might you could tell tell her for me? I'd make it worth your while. You could take her a nice Lunacean lily bell. You'd think she'd like that. I I reckon she'd like that. Ain't met a woman who what didn't like flowers. So now, not only do I have to take this flower to her, but I have to find it. But let's go turn in our quest. We're still under 20 minutes, just barely. Turn this quest down here at Candle Keep. Ooh, not good. Uh, stay with me, Carbuncle. Stay with me. Can I jump from here? Please let me jump from here. Uh oh, I'm in combat. And I died. <laughs> Not thinking, jumping in combat. Oh, unfortunate. So we warp back to Lamenta, where I will teleport at probably a hefty cost because I didn't set it as a favored destination. Back to Morobi Dry Docks, oh, 170, not horrible. Oh, I wasn't thinking when I did that. 
as evident by me saying as I flew through the air, oh, this is probably going to kill me. Well, I suppose while I'm here, I'll turn in this quest to Mimidoa. Hey, where'd you crawl in from? I don't recall sending for no initiates, eh? Mia Aliapo. I once knew a last named Mia back when I served on the Cloud Dancer. She was a buxom young lass with eyes as big and round as an ogre's pumpkins. As ogre pumpkins. You ain't her, though. Nose ain't quite right. And who are you again? Ah, I got something to tell me, has ye? Rostens, eh? What's that mumbling milk sop want whining about this time? No, let me guess. That he's lonely? Bah, put a pair of warm women in his arms and another in his lap and he'll be right as rain. Tis what I'd... I do to help me forget what ails me. Not that old Mimodia, Mimodia, Mimidoa needs much help with forgetting, mind ye. Might be that I'll set him up with a few saucy strumpets this coming eve. Well, he's a class act. Gotta love pirates. We'll just turn in our number of quests here while I'm in Morobi, and we'll pick up in the next episode with the rest of everything. Ah, we'll turn in his last. I want to go down here to Hez Kessel. Oh, no, I... Oh, I don't know what he said. I apologize. It's probably something about, do I have the cores? Leviathan's eye, you really done gone and fetched me the blinking cores. At Baron will be right pleased to see that he will. Twas the foreman what came up with the idea to use the cores to heat the rivets. A clever one, that man. Sharper than a fang in a fishback's beak. Probably is why they made him chief so quick-like. I will take the hard leather light mitts. Another pair of mittens that we'll end up wearing and once we hit level 14, which we are nearing ever closer to. And Otbeerm. Hey, Biggie. I am relieved to hear that both Smid and the supplies were unharmed, though it was foolish for him to believe that I would blame him for what which was obviously out of his hands. You see, there was no storm that day, and the seas here adjacent to the dry docks were as calm as a slumbering child. This leads me to believe that trou the trouble ships encountered off Camel to Keep Quay was less of natural sort, the sort which the Sahagin have been known to conjure. And we get our new Ash Pitrix book, which I will equip immediately. I did not mean to open my inventory. And talk with Atbeerm again. Victory Foreman Atbeerm is considering re recommending you for an important job involving dry dock security. Mia, while I originally had doubts about your motives, you have repeatedly proven yourself an asset to Naldek and Vimelis. I still do not like you, but that doesn't mean I do not trust you. Well, at least he's open. Grimthoda, head of the watch here at the dry docks, believes that pirates may be plotting an attack on, vic on the victory and she requires assistance of investigating a group of unsavory individuals making camp nearby. I have recommended you for the task. Despite all limps and limits endured before, during, and following the calamity, the fact that there are still those who would turn their backs on the city-state so that they might line their pockets with a few handfuls of coin, just the thought of it sickens me. Thanks for pointing. Well... After an unexpected death, I believe that's the first one I've had with Mia, too. Man, that's, uh, we'll wrap up this episode. I want to thank you all for watching as I run back to the Aetherite. If you like the video, if you could give it a like or a favorite, that would be fantastic. If you want to see more like this, please check out the channel. And uh, subscribe, that would be fantastic as well. Uh, we're drawing closer to our 100 subscribers that are needed for, uh live streaming here on YouTube, which I would love to do, but if not, we will be live streaming over on, Twi on Twitch at www.twitch.tv slash jcletsplay, and whenever I am streaming, you'll be able to find that information on my Twitter at at jcletsplaygames, and uh, if you were following me before, please refollow. That's I had to delete the previous account and recreate it in order to link it with YouTube properly. Uh, in the meantime, my name is Jonathan Cook. This is JC Let's Play. We've been playing with Mia Aliapo as we get a goodbye wave from her, and I want to thank you all for watching. In the meantime, please take care and peace out.